Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and we are finally over all of the rains and my garden looks like a destroyed hot mess. <laughs> so I came out to clean it, but I thought first I'd give you guys a garden tour so you can see just how much everything has grown and just kind of see what I got going on back here. So let's start with the front. So first, I just want to say big welcome to all of our new subscribers. Um, I am Tiffany Benson, and I have a desert garden in Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, I try and grow 360 a year, or 365 a year. Sometimes it happens, sometimes I have a few things that die when we get super, super hot. But for the most part, I'm able to grow pretty much all year long. So, I'm going to give you guys a tour of what I've got going on right now so that if you are gardening in super hot climates, then you guys can be able to know what you can and can't grow. And if you see stuff destroyed in my garden, like that blue tarp back there, I have to clean it up. The winds were crazy here, the rain was crazy, it was just everything, broken trees, everything. Alright guys, so first up I like to call this my kitchen herb bed. This is pretty much everything that I come out when I'm making dinner and I just want to grab a couple herbs from dinner. This is typically where I get it from. So I have some sweet marjoram here, I have some oregano. My chives are looking a little sad, I think they're a little waterlogged. And then I also have some lemon thyme here and here and German thyme back there. I have a little hedgehog that my sister got me that everybody always comments about. I want to get a good name for the hedgehog, so comment down below what you guys think I should name him or her. I haven't decided if it's a him or her yet. I think we'll depend on the names. But I also have some rosemary here and here. I have some parsley there and there. And then I also have some, I can never say this right, but it's chervelle. I believe and then I also have some sage now I grow my herbs in a super tight space even when they're out in my beds which I will talk about later why I grow herbs out in my beds in a later video but typically I grow them in a super tight space because I'm always using them my herbs never have a chance to really get overgrown and kind of take over because either I'm drying them while it's their season so that I have them for teas and have them for future seasonings or I'm using them every single day to cook because I do not use bottled seasoning. Well, there's one or two I might use every now and then when we're grilling, but majority of the time I do not. All right guys, so this is my long patio bed. Now for those of you guys that are trying to grow on a patio or you don't have like any type of dirt in your backyard, it's possible to put in a garden bed. All I did was I took these bricks from Home Depot and then I just put some wood pieces in them and then I just put a, a tarp that I got from the Dollar Tree, actually it's like a weed barrier. I put that inside of it and then just filled it up with compost and dirt and raised bed soil. And that has been on top of this patio and I've been growing on here for about, I want to say this is my third or fourth season growing in there. So inside of here I have some spinach, I have some lettuce. Now this lettuce is bolting. When you guys want to know what it looks like when your lettuce bolts, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, this is a very soft lettuce, I forgot the name of it, but it was one that likes a lot colder temperatures than like my um, red romaine here. So this one bolted a lot quicker. It's okay because I do have a Jericho lettuce that I'm going to plant in its place. And then I have my collard greens here, which got some hell damage. If you guys can see all of these like little scratches on this, and then the holes, they are from hell. Like our hell was crazy during the rainstorm. Now some of them had a little bit of bug damage, but the majority of this is hell damage. And then up in the pots here, I have some mint that survived all winter long. I'm so surprised at that. And then I have some lemon thyme and I have some German thyme. And then my Thai basil is, I'm trying to see if it's going to go to seed. So I'm letting that kind of just go out. And then the purple basil has already died. So down below here, we have coming in now nicely some mustard greens. So I love mustard greens. They're one of my favorite. 
um, to eat so I'm going to uh, be waiting for those patiently and then my Swiss chard is finally starting to get big now Swiss chard and kale this part of my bed I'm gonna be able to leave for a decent part until the summer probably even my collard greens too as well so this part you guys are gonna be seeing grow bigger and bigger and bigger so next to it I have some dwarf kale plants and I have a purple one in the back and then just regular ones up here and then I have a giant cabbage here that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger I'm gonna have to come collect some of these leaves which I'll show you guys what I'll do with them um, in a later video this week and then I have a swish chard back there and then I have a artichoke that looks all types of crazy right here. Now in front of this bed, I have some, I will get the tag because I can never say this right, some radica, I cannot say that guys. <laughs> but I have that. And then I also have some smaller cabbage plants that look like they're getting ready to head up. And then I have some more collards, some Georgia collards here and there. And then up here, I have some carrots that are coming in, which I need to plant some more carrots. When I first purchased my house, I just had a big patio that people use for entertaining. I think the person here before me even had a hot tub on it, and then there was the dirt plot with two trees in the back. And when I started gardening, I originally started gardening in pots and took over just a little bit of space on the patio but then I realized after starting to plant in the big area in the back that I wanted to plant more so uh, knowing that I ran out of space back there I moved back to the patio and thought okay what more can I do with it so you guys can really expand your space or even if you're in an apartment or anything like that know that you don't need actual like a lot of land or like even a dirt pot or plot to even plant stuff you can just create that on your cement <laughs> brick whatever and grow as much as you want to grow now moving over here by my tree that I'm told to fertilize on Valentine's Day so it was a little bit crazy and now it's starting to flower and it's actually starting to get some new growth on it too as well but this is my lime tree it produces these little key limes um, and it's produced a bunch of them actually but now it's starting to uh, produce more flowers which the hummingbirds are over here all the time you guys can see it has little limes on it and it's starting to grow back I was a little worried about it but now I think that we're gonna be fine and then down below it I have my Dollar Tree trays this is crazy guys all this bok choy you wouldn't even be able to realize that this is a stackable tray looking at it because there's so much bok choy on it I'm gonna need to come out here and grab some of that and then I also have more parsley and then my spinach all below here so one of the things I really wanted to grow a lot of was parsley because I learned how to cook with a lot of parsley so parsley has been one of those things I have really started to learn how to cook with and, and grow a lot of and then also my spinach I love and then over here I have my lettuces my lettuces and then I also have some chives one row of chives but there are just all different types of lettuces on here for those of you that got those Dollar Tree pots or for those of you guys that have been thinking if I should get those Dollar Tree pots you should go get them because for six bucks I created like a little tower well actually created three little towers and I also have another set of three too as well that I'm gonna be starting my beans in and when those lettuces are done I'm gonna start more beans in those so that I can have bush beans everywhere so if you guys need to have garden space growing vertically is gonna be how you get more garden space and those little things being just a dollar are totally worth it okay guys now is where things start looking like a jungle <laughs> so up here I have two tomato plants I, I know one is a hundred sweet and then oh the other one is a Bonnie's original so I'm gonna have some cherry tomatoes like this and then I'm gonna have some of these cool little fluted tomatoes like that so I'm pretty excited for those I have a rosemary growing right in here and then over here I have some more parsley and then I have some jalapenos my jalapenos guys are really starting to produce 
you guys can see all of those in there. They're really, really starting to produce. So I'm excited about that. And then I have my Better Bush tomato, which I'm waiting for these to blush. If there's one thing you guys will grow patience and patient with, it's waiting for tomatoes to blush because they take forever to do so. And then I have my eggplant, which I'm waiting for some more eggplants to grow on. And then I have my shishitos, which produce mountains of shishitos every single day, including red ones now. I'm so excited. I got more red ones this year than I did before. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I have another eggplant over there. And then I have this new little guy, which is the stevia plant. So this I'm waiting for it to get a little bit bigger before I start pulling leaves on it. But I wanna reduce our sugar. So I got a stevia plant so that then we can start making that with our teas. And I'm still waiting for poppy seeds. Okay guys, I came and I sat in my favorite spot because I wanted to enjoy my red shishito pepper. These have been really rare, but for some reason this year, I think it's because those are two year old plants. I've gotten one, a lot more shishitos and two, a lot more super sweet red ones. So I'm pretty excited about this. Normally, I do try and share them with Mr. Benson, but he's sleeping, so I'm just gonna eat it myself. So one thing I'm really working on is seed saving. So, I, a lot of people have asked me if I were going to put together like an Etsy or anything like that and sell seeds, and I think that I'm gonna try it because I do get a lot of seeds in my garden because I actually grow things that produce a lot of seeds, and things produce a lot of seeds anyway. So like my shishito peppers, a lot of people can't find shishito seeds, like they're one of the first things that go out. and. I always have tons of shishito seeds because we eat a lot of shishito peppers here. And with the red ones, when they're fully ripened, we always eat those raw so they're not cooked. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to start collecting these and put them together so that then hopefully soon I can have an Etsy store. We'll also show you the Malabar spinach, which another rare seed that a lot of people couldn't find that I have tons of seeds right there. Okay guys, now we're moving out into the big space where I have everything, a lot of majority of stuff. Now guys, a lot of my plants you're gonna see look like this, look like they have like little white marks all on them. This is hell damage. This is the hell basically just destroying them as it's hitting them. And so it put a little scratches all over them. So some of my, my plants are affected like this tomato one but as you can see they're growing new leaves and they're also growing little cherry tomatoes on there so on this one this is my patio arch trellis so if you guys don't have like space in the dirt to be able to put an arch trellis you can easily make it out of two pots and some masonry ladders and if you guys want to see how that's done I do have a video um, down in my how-to videos with different gardening projects and you guys can see that I'll link it down below if I can remember but I have a tomato plant here I have my celery right here and then also guys look at this I got two beans of the season so I'm actually gonna throw these in the dehydrator when I dehydrate some of the green leaves but yeah that's kind of funny and then over here I have my rat tail radishes, which look at these guys. These are some gnarly looking little things. They look like little fingers everywhere. So I can't wait to try those. And this is a heavy producing plant because all of this is one plant. So I think it's so insane that we literally had like rain and just hail everywhere like a week ago. And right now it's going to be, I want to say like 79, 80 degrees. How crazy is that? But that's Arizona, that's the desert weather, and that's also probably like global warming. <laughs> but um, I want to remind you guys too that when you're planting your plants, also make sure that you try and plant for yourself, not only, but also for the environment. So uh, my dill, we don't use that much dill in a year, in a given year. We'll use a lot, like I audit for like pickling stuff or to bake things with or pastas or different things like that. But a lot of fresh dill, we usually only use dill 
when it's fresh during the season that we're using it in. And then other, that, other than that, I don't use a lot of dill. But dill is one of the main foods for the uh, um, caterpillars that turn into monarch butterflies. So par by providing that flower there for those caterpillars, that's going to do a lot for the environment and still provide us with a lot of butterflies, which then come back and pollinate things during the heat of the summer. So try and leave at least a couple things in your garden that you can kind of give back to nature and help nature out. Because if you guys looked at my Instagram, which I'll put here if you guys are not following, I live in a rock desert, <laughs> right across a, a rock mountain. <laughs> so right across the street is where the highest part of the mountain is. We live at the base and I posted a picture where I was hiking um, about two days ago. And that's the environment that these insects and these creatures are trying to live in. So a lot of times when I get things in my backyard that are eating things, yes, of course, you're going to get frustrated because you don't really want to share. Nobody wants to share. But remember, you do have to share. Speaking of sharing, we have a happy little bee here that's just going through and pollinating all of these dragon tail radishes that are then going to turn into that. So we're thankful for that. Thanks, little bee. So now on this side, I have some more shishito peppers. I'm starting some herbs and some different things that are going in these pots. So sooner or later, you guys are gonna see me start filling these pots. These beans, although they're actually getting ready to look like they're gonna start to climb, I'm actually gonna pull these because I was hoping that they would climb a lot sooner so that then I can put my um, loofah is gonna go right here, I believe. And then over here in the brick, I have my Malabar spinach that, as you can see, has a lot of hell damage. But right now, I'm keeping the Malabar spinach for these little guys. These little berries are actually the seeds. So probably in tomorrow's video, I'm going to come out and start harvesting some of these. And when I do the greens, so that I can start drying them. So we also over here, I'm gonna pull up those bean plants around this um, Brussels sprout so that I can start kind of getting a little bit more space in the garden to plant some other things. But the Brussels sprout I'm still waiting for. And then moving along here, we have a pepper plant over there in the corner. And then this tomato plant, guys, that I used the mixture of the uh, hydrogen peroxide and water as you guys can see, it saved it, and look at here. We have our first little tomato back here. You guys can see it right back there. So that mixture actually saved it, and now you'll see there's a lot more flowers going on it too as well. But look at there, there's the tomato. And then up here I have some radishes coming in. Soon they're gonna um, bulb up. Actually, I think this one is already starting to. So you guys can see that there. And then I have some cabbages that I'm pretty much just growing for greens because it's going to be too late for those ones to head up. Then I have my yellow bells, which I have a nice big pepper right here. And then there's one growing underneath it. And then this one has some little babies on it. And then I have my snow peas over there in the back as well as a kurabi right in the back. So guys, now when I was talking about saving seeds, one of the ones I was really talking about was this Malabar spinach. And I remember when I was looking for Malabar spinach seeds because everybody said how great they grow during the hot parts of, the, of Arizona summers, which they do when everything was pretty much failing in my garden because it was 119 degrees, this little guy was still living its best life. It does not like the extreme cold, so it started to go to seed, but that's what I wanted. I've been waiting and I've been leaving this plant here because I know how hard those seeds were to find, so I don't ever want to run out of them, so I'm going to make sure I always have some Malabar seeds. And I think I am going to create an Etsy shop. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I should create one? If you guys think so, comment down below. So now we're going to go on to the bed that gets the uh, perfect amount of sun. It's right next to the worm composting bin, so it always has worm castings in it. And for some reason, it always maintains the perfect amount of water, and it just grows wild. So I'm going to show you guys what that bed looks like, because it looks like a wild mess. So here it is. Always expect to have one perfect spot in your garden that just kind of grows everything 
amazingly. Um, that's this bed right here. So I do need to get in here and prune this tomato plant because it is officially taking over and I do not want it to take over. I want everything to get ample amount of sun. But in here I have broccoli, which will go on this side because it'll be easier to see. But the broccoli all have broccoli heads on them. That's something I'm so excited about because once you get the, the first broccoli head, then you just leave the plant and it'll give you shoots. And we make a lot of just steamed broccoli or stir fry or any of that with the broccoli heads or with the, the florets of the broccoli. Also, I'm gonna come in here and grab the leaves, a lot of the leaves, because I am going to dry those to make a green powder. And then down below here, which is another reason why I need to get all the leaves, I have some cilantro that is providing me cilantro and it's also keeping bugs away. That's what I intermix my herbs with my um, vegetables for. And then over here, I have a massive amount of tomatoes. So I have tomatoes that are like small, like right here. And then I have bigger ones like over there. And then I have really big ones in there. And I just have tomatoes all over this thing. I'm actually gonna come in and crop out any vine that does not have a tomato on it. Look at those guys. There's gonna be a nice tomato harvest coming off of this. But anyone that doesn't have tomatoes on it, I'm gonna crop off. So hopefully that'll give this bed some more sun and it'll also kind of give the plant a little less to focus on and then over here i have some snow peas that are finally starting to create some snow peas so that's going to be fun and then in the middle here i have some turnip um, turnip greens and then i have some scarlet red runner beans now for those of you guys that commented on my poll this is what we're looking at we're trying to see which one of these is gonna get to the top here first. Now my snow peas will probably go right exactly to the top and these runner beans will probably go all the way over the arch, but we wanna see which one's gonna get here first. So if you guys haven't looked at my community page, make sure you do so that you can vote which one, whether it's gonna be the snow peas or it's gonna be the runner beans. Now, when I first posted that, the snow peas were winning, but now I'm starting to see uh, the runner beans made a big giant leap. Also, right in front of both the beds, I have some celery that I have planted there, and then I also have some planted here. So these ones are starting to do really nice as well. I swear, you're always going to have that one spot in your garden that just does amazingly. So when anybody says, oh, you grow a garden, you're going to be like, yeah, I do. And then you're going to take a picture of that spot and then send it to them because that's just like your, your good spot. <laughs> I don't know whether it's the worm bed or if it's the amount of sun or it's the combination of two, but this spot in my garden, no matter what I plant in it, in it and right now I do now tomatoes, which I didn't do tomatoes before. Last year it was broccoli, cilantro, and cabbage. All did amazing, but this year, since the cabbage had a harder time heading up because it got warmer quicker last year, I decided to put the tomato, since it was gonna be a warmer winter it looked like. So I did the tomato, the broccoli, and the cilantro, and they all are doing amazing again. And I know this is gonna be a heavy producer for all of them, so I'm excited for it. So now guys, we're gonna to move to uh, something I'm really excited about, which are my bare root strawberries because they're starting to become alive. So look at that guys. Turns out, even though they look dead, they were not dead, they were just dormant. So I have some little leaves coming in here on all of them. So all of them lived, all of them made it and I have some leaves coming in on them so I can't wait for the strawberries to kind of take over this area. I have my, I think these are petunia flowers that I'm going to come through and deadhead um, when I do my harvest video just so I can get those growing in new flowers again. And then look at that, the lemongrass is starting to grow back after I preserved all of that, chopped it up and preserved it. So this is gonna be another round of medicine. If you guys aren't growing lemongrass, make sure you do, because it's very good for you. And speaking of things that are good for you, this is my medicinal herb bed. So I have this new little guy here that I got from the AZ Worm Farm. It is called a lemon drops, is like the actual name, 
but it's a toothache plant. So if you have a toothache, you can use these flowers and that will help your toothache. So I'm gonna be growing these ones out and preserving those. I have some radishes that are just filling space right now. I have the catnip that is still doing amazing. And then I have some chamomile right there and some hyssop right over there. All right guys, there is a lot back here <laughs> and this video is gonna be so long. So if you guys have made it this far, thank you for continuing to watch it and leave like a thumbs up. So I know you made it this far. So also over here, my lemon balm is doing pretty good. Now I've decided that I'm going to move this lemon balm, even though it's doing really, really well here, because I wanna put something here that I can grow up one of these like little bitty trellises. So I'm gonna put something that's small that can still kind of handle the spring. I know during the summer it's gonna to be too hot to be over here, but something that I can have like fill and kind of grow a little bit tall. And then I've started the plants inside for all of these little pots, but the lemon balm doing really, really well and it's starting to bush out. So the last thing I have growing over here, guys, in my messy area, which I'm gonna clean up, <laughs> is my aloe. And this aloe is really starting to get a lot thicker and a lot bigger. So I'm pretty excited about that one. And then I have just some flowers growing down below it. So that is it guys. I have, that's a lot going on in my garden right now and there's a lot that needs to be harvested, a lot that needs to be kind of cleaned up and I will be showing you guys in other videos this week kind of what I'm doing with all of this because there's a lot going on that I can use right now. So I'm pretty excited that we've finally gotten to that point to where I can start using it to preserve it and then also to cook with it. But until next time, make sure you guys are growing yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.